So something a little bit funny occurred to me this week as I was helping some students prepare Fred Cockrum's June Apple from the High Atmosphere recording, and that is this. You're only ever really as good as your weakest phrase in a given recording or performance or piece. And there were a couple of phrases that students were consistently getting hung up on in the Fred Cockrum June Apple. And today I wanna to help you with them, give you some check patterns to iron them out and make them really good and automatic so that you don't have to think about them anymore. Today on Banjo Quest. So today we're going to look specifically at Fred's way of using the alternate string pull-off in the High Atmosphere June Apple. He's using a same string alternate string pull-off. I'm going to walk you through that, and then I'm going to give you a check pattern so you can verify your work. And I'm gonna show you what to listen for as you're generating these patterns. These patterns need to be automatic. They need to be something that you don't have to think about, that your hands just execute in the moment, in time, so you can move on to other things and deliver a really good performance, or you can lock in with the other musicians that you're playing with in a jam or a dance situation. So let's take a look at these alternate string pull-offs. I'll walk you through them. Then I'm going to show you some various tempos I'll show you a check pattern and then we'll talk about it at the end. So Fred uses a same string alternate string pull off in the first measure of the B part. I'm going to show you that pattern right now, nice and slow. Faster. And let's get this thing cooking. Uh, maybe go faster? Let's see. What's going on here? Well, first of all, this is a typical alternate string pull-off, right? We've covered that in the past. If you need a refresher on that, hop back over to Banjo Blitz and look at the alternate string pull-off exercises. Normally, alternate string pull-offs most commonly sound like this. Where the downstroke changes strings. Fred's doesn't. You would think that that would make it easier, and in some respects, it does make it easier because you're not having to shift your downstroke to another string. So in that way, it could be a little bit easier for you beginners who are trying to get a hold of these alternate string pull-offs. What makes it challenging, though, is this sort of bounce on the same string with each downstroke. It gets really obvious when those things, when those two downstrokes on the same string are out of whack with each other, are not in the same volume or the timing is off, it really stands out like a sore thumb. So I've made a check pattern for you guys so that you can verify that you're really getting those downstrokes right on that open third string and then you can fall into the check pattern, then fall back out of the check pattern into the alternate string pull off. This check pattern, I'm simply going to be doing a double thumbing pattern on the open third string. Pretty easy. Now let's pair the check pattern with the alternate string pull off pattern. Faster. And let's get this rolling here.
First of all, I'm listening for no disruption between the check pattern and the phrase that we're working on. It should sound the same. I shouldn't hear the seams of me switching in and out of those patterns. That downstroke on the open third string also should sound consistent throughout the entire pattern, both with the check pattern and the alternate string pull-off pattern. So I should be hearing that pulsing on the open string, nice and clear, nice and regular, the entire time, regardless of whether I'm playing the check pattern or whether I'm playing the phrase that Fred plays in June Apple. Now some other things to think about. This fifth string, you've got to change from a double thumbing pattern to a bump ditty pattern with the right hand. Let me play you the check pattern and Fred Cockrum's phrase without using my left hand. So I'm deleting the left hand. I'm imagining that it would be playing though. So the check pattern, all double thumbs. No surprises there. When I move to Fred's alternate string pull off though, here it goes, so one, two, three, four. Check one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Back to Fred. Faster, one, two, check. Here comes Fred. got to be able to flex between a pure double thumbing pattern on the one hand, which is represented by the check pattern, and then into that bump ditty pattern with a seamlessness in the middle. There's no seam, I'm just blending nice and easy between the parts. If you can't do that, just keep the left hand deleted. Especially for you beginners who are trying to get this alternate string pull off in your bones, sometimes getting rid of one of the complications of the pattern is the best way to go. So you can delete that left hand, get the flow between double thumbing and bum ditty down, then add the left hand back in. Now there's another alternate string pull off pattern buried in Fred Cockrum's performance. It's a same string alternate string pull off pattern. Let me show you how to play it. And it's out of sort of the C shape, this double stop C shape. You might remember this pattern from like Let Me Fall that we did earlier in Banjo Quest. But this stays on the same string with the downstroke. Because this is in the C shape, I'm using my ring finger to pull off on the second fret first string. Because I'm operating out of that C shape, that just seems logical to me. You may feel differently and you may want to use your middle finger, but I feel like being in that C shape position and ready to go means that I can change and add variations that are in that C shape at will. It makes it a little bit easier to operate. So that's why I favor using the ring finger on the second fret first string for that instead of the middle. Now we can play a check pattern. I bet you can guess exactly what we're going to do. For those of you who can't, let me show you. Check pattern will be. Then regular pattern. One, two, three, four. Check. Listen to what is happening in your own playing. Really focus, see what you can hear. Can you hear the pull off? 
Can you hear the fifth string? If your answer is no to those, slow it down and get those right. You need a nice, big, strong pull off and you need an authoritative fifth string in order to make this pattern really sing and really shine. It doesn't work if everything else is really quiet, if only those downstrokes exist. You've gotta have these other parts of the pattern in there as equal partners in order to get that rolling eighth note pattern that Fred gets on the recording. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. It's a lot of fun to just sort of extract these difficult techniques and remember, your work is not done if you can just get this up at a high speed. You've got to integrate it back into the tune. That would be your next step, and that is exactly what we will be covering on the patron-only video this week on Patreon. So hop on over to Patreon if you want more content. I do two videos every week, but only one gets shown to the public. The rest is reserved for my patrons over at Patreon. So hop on over if you want more of this material, and I will see you next week on Banjo Quest.